Hello guys and welcome to Porto. Today we are going to discover another beautiful city in Portugal and we will start with the main viewpoint, Clerics Tower. The architectural complex of Clerics is a must-see for anyone who visits the city of Porto. It consists of a tower, a museum and a church. After checking your ticket, you enter the museum full of history and religious artifacts. From the windows in the corridors of the museum you can admire incredible views of the church. Tries to go there as uh, early as possible. I went at 9 o'clock because in the middle of the day it's just a hell. You should climb very narrow stairs and if there will be lots of people there, it will be very very slowly and tough. Ticket costs 6 euros. It's for both tower and museum. I was rushing to the museum to be one of the first in the tower because in 10 minutes there was already lots of people. In 1753, the architect Nicola Nazoni presented a project of the construction of the most beautiful tower which dominated the entire urban landscape of Porto. At over 75 meters, after climbing 225 steps and reaching the top of the tower, the view of the city is simply amazing. From a 360-degree view, visitors can enjoy the unique moment, whether day or night, when at a special time the tower opens its doors until 23 o'clock. The view is very beautiful and impressive, but let's move on to the next landmark of Porto the famous library. The Lilo bookstore is probably one of the most famous and crowded in Europe, so I bought a ticket online in advance. But I was just shocked by the huge queue and the number of people. It's the one of the oldest bookstores in Portugal and frequently rated among the top bookstores in the world. The bookstore has gained such popularity in recent years, thanks to the Harry Potter novels. Joan Rowling drew her inspiration from this library. There is even a 3-hour tour of the city dedicated exclusively to Rowling and her work on Harry Potter. So honestly, it was just crazy staying in this uh, huge line and so many people around. Um, but luckily for you, you have me and I will teach you how to go to this library without staying in a huge line. Uh, so first of all, they have two types of tickets. One ticket is for 5 euros and another ticket for 13 euros. It's a priority ticket for a priority line. And priority line is almost empty. So just buy this ticket for 13 euros and go to the priority line. Why so? Because actually each ticket, 5 euros, 13 euros, it's not a ticket, it's a voucher that gives you a discount for any book, one book in this library. And of course you would want to buy the book because they are just extremely beautiful. I have mine, I will show you later. And the cheapest book in this library costs 16 euros. So anyway you will spend at least 16 euros if you want a book. So there is no sense to buy 5 euros ticket at all. Buy 16 euros and go without line. And they also make charity for Ukraine as well. Uh, if you buy the Ukrainian book, the Ukrainian translation of The Little Prince of Saint Exupery, uh, they uh, supposed to donate 10 euros for the Ukrainian charity. But they don't have these books. Well, they are still waiting for delivery. But even if you are totally broken or spend all your money on books and coffee, there are so many things to see in Porto for free. One of the most emblematic images of Porto's history are the beautiful Azulejo tiles. We've already visited the Azulejo Museum in Lisbon. While in Porto we can enjoy the most beautiful examples of this art in decorating houses and churches. Of course I can't list all the beautiful buildings in Porto in one video, but I will give you three examples. The Catholic Church of Our Lady of Carmo, national heritage in the Baroque Rococo style. For a fair price, you may go inside and visit the narrowest house of Porto, church, catacombs and other rooms. The Church of Saint Ildefonso, situated close to the Batalha Square, dates back to the 18th century. The church is free to enter. You can enjoy beautiful stained glass windows and a pipe organ dating from 1811. You will find Chapel of Souls right in the middle of the main shopping street of Porto. It's always at the top of mass ceiling landmarks for tourists and probably the most photographed building in Portugal. So if you arrive to Porto by train, you were probably amazed by the beauty of the train station. Sao Bento is one of the most beautiful train stations in Europe. 
If you come by train, this will surely be the first thing that strikes you in Porto. This train station was designed by French architect in 1903 and complemented by a superb Portuguese azulejos, which were created in 1930s and depict the history of transport in Portugal, the country's landscapes and Portugal's defining historic moments. A little secret for fast food lovers. Not far from the train station you will find McDonald's Imperial Restaurant, which looks like a real high-class place. Pay attention not only to churches and viewpoints, but also to markets. On your way to Douro River, you may notice Mercado Ferreira Borges, a historic building constructed in 1885 to replace an already outdated market. It currently serves as a cultural place for concert exhibitions and fairs. And between the market and the river, you will find a lot of incredibly beautiful narrow streets where you just want to get lost. So we reached Douro River and you may wonder why so many boats and people here. That's because Porto has many bridges and Six Bridges Tour is one of the most popular here. Everyone said that if you go to Porto, you should definitely take Six Bridges Tour on the water and enjoy the city. But I guess you can imagine how crowded are those tours if you buy a group ticket. In any case, we will try to get on the tour on some less busy day. But for now, let's try to enjoy the embankment and cross the river on the Don Luis the First Bridge. So on this river bank they have most of the wineries. If you really like uh, wine, you can explore it, try different sorts and so on and so on. But I'm here only for the nice view and one more art of uh, Cordavo. If you are wondering who is Artur Bordalo, check my video about Lisbon. Meanwhile, let's go up to the Miradora de Serra de Pilar, ignoring all the multiple wineries on this side of the river. I'm sure people on the funicular don't have so much fun like I do. The Serra de Pilar monastery is a 17th century church standing over the Douro river. This church is registered as a World Heritage by UNESCO and is a unique example throughout Portugal due to the circular floor, much more common in civil architecture. From its terrace you can enjoy marvelous views over the Douro River, the oldest part of the city and the roof of the wineries of Porto. And if you go down a bit, there will be another incredible viewpoint – Miradora de Ribeira. Let's go back to our side of the river, but now on the top of the Luis I bridge, where in addition to pedestrians, beautiful yellow trams run. And of course, around this bridge you will find tons of beautiful viewpoints. There are just a huge number of observation decks in Porto. And of course, it's very difficult to have time to visit everything. In the old city, I visited two popular viewpoints. Miradoro da Vitoria and Miradoro da Ingreja de San Lorenzo, near St. Lawrence Church. So there are basically three things you can do that we didn't do today together. It's a six bridges water tour. It's a wine tour <laughs> and you can ride the funicular instead of walking. But of course I couldn't resist the Six Bridges tour for long. I was very lucky. I started on a clear morning on a day when bad weather was predicted. So I managed to get a good place and the ship was not overloaded. Upon our return, a huge queue of tourists was already waiting for us. Therefore, I advise you to come to the tour early and well in advance in order to get good seats. The cruise lasts 50 minutes and is truly one of the most beautiful and must-see things in Porto. You will see the next bridges. The first one will already observe a lot. Incredibly beautiful Dom Luis the first bridge. During the tour, you will hear information about the bridge and the city in several languages. So don't worry that you will not understand something. The next is Ponte de Infante, the contemporary road bridge completed in 2003. Inspired by the alpine bridges of Robert Meyer, its arch is one of the shallowest in the world. Next one, Donna Maria Pia bridge, designed by Gustav Elfel, the same person who designed the Elfel Tower. 
It was built in 1877 as a railway bridge, but it's no longer in use and is considered a national monument of Portugal. Almost immediately you will see the St. John's Railway Bridge. It replaced the functionality of Maria Pia Bridge in 1991. Near the 5th bridge, Fresho Bridge. Your boat will begin to turn around and you will have an opportunity to see all the beauty of all five bridges again. But instead of stopping near the Luigi I bridge, the cruise continues along the rear bank to reach the last of the six Porto bridges, Arabita bridge. During this trip you will have a unique opportunity to see the beauty of less touristic regions of Porto. And near your final destination you will observe Aforada, a wonderful fisherman village just outside Porto, which is still not damaged by tourism. But let's not stop here and go straight to the ocean. But this time we need to use a bus. Unfortunately, the people who live in the center of Porto are not very lucky. It takes quite a while to get to the ocean by public transport. And you know how much I love lighthouses. So I walk to the red lighthouse Farolim da Barra do Douro. If you look close at the video, you can see the green lighthouse on the opposite side of the river, Farol do Pantao. continued my movement in the northerly direction along the ocean. Along the way you can see a huge number of small beaches, parks and embankments. You will also see several forts along the way. One of them, Fort of São Francisco do Queso, frequently shorted to Castle the Cheese, really attracted my attention. The entrance is very cheap, but the view from the fort are amazing. Well, that's all. This is the end of my journey through the city of Porto. I hope you got some useful information and you enjoyed this video. If so, I will be very grateful for the like and subscription. And see you in the next video.